Some say adventure is dead. There's nothing left to explore. So why bother? But you know what? I say exploration is all in the mind. Just because someone else has been there before doesn't mean you can't explore it for yourself. You can find wonder around every corner. If you want to find it. It's all in how you view it. Look at things in a different light. You're guaranteed to find something new. Look at it from a different perspective. You're sure to see something you didn't before. Take a look at your surroundings with fresh eyes. You just might find that adventure is in your own backyard. But you have to be ready for it. Be open to it. Adventure is anywhere you want it to be. So I say, adventure is not dead. Adventure is everywhere, if you want it. You guys like that intro film? There's two special things about that intro film. One, one, that was made for the Peter McKinnon 72 hour challenge. I really enjoyed doing it. It's an idea I had for a while. It was nice to have the motivation to get out and do that one. Just a little kick in the butt, just a little kick in the butt to get out and do it. So really pleased I finally got that done. I was super happy with it. If you guys like it, do me a huge favor. Hit that thumbs up button down there if you really like that short film. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more of those short films. And number two, the second special thing about that film that was shot using entirely my absolute favorite lens I have ever used. And that that lens is the Canon 24 to 70 F 28 L series lens version two. It has been one of my absolute all time favorite camera gear purchases. It is one of the most versatile, best all around well rounded lenses not too big not too small got a good range to it f2.8 gives some pretty good low light performance and it's just it's a really sharp good looking lens i like it and by good looking i don't mean good looking like it, the lens itself looks good the images that i get with that lens that's what i mean by good looking i do talk a lot of good things about this lens but my one not really even complaint about this lens just kind of one naggy thing, just always like, why doesn't this lens have image stabilizer built into it? I'm using my EOS R to do a lot more video lately. So I'm wondering if I get an image stabilized lens, is that gonna help me with video? So I got on the internet, started looking around, and then I found the Sigma 24-70 F2.8 OS, not IS, OS, same thing really. Optical stabilization is what Sigma calls it, Image stabilization is what Canon calls it, but this lens doesn't have it. The Sigma lens does. OS, optical stabilized. Optically stabilized, optical stabilization. I'm not sure the exact term off the top of my head, but it's stabilized. So I wanted to get my hands on this lens and test it out, which I did for a very brief period of time. So I have some test shots I wanna share with you guys, photo and video. Before we get too far into this, if you are curious about all the technical specs for both of these, I don't dive too far into that, but I have dropped links down below in the description for both of these lenses, so go ahead and check that out. And if you're curious to download the sample photos and videos that I shot for this, I have a link down below in the description for that as well. You can download the raw photos and the video straight out of camera, so you can do your own comparisons on your own computer screen. It's a big help. Seriously, do it down below in the description. So let's dive right in and take a look at these and see if there's much of a difference between the Canon and the Sigma lens. The Sigma is cheaper. That's why I'm really looking into this because it's cheaper and it has image stabilization, optical stabilization. 
That's what Sigma calls it. Take a look at these photos. So the first shot we have pulled up here is just a wide shot. Nothing terribly interesting, um, but it is a sunset shot. Uh, it's got good dynamic range here, so that's kind of giving us dynamic range between the two lenses. So here's the Sigma lens as the overall, and then here is the Canon lens as the overall. Now these are straight out of camera. I did not do any post-production. I just shot raw, exported it out of Lightroom, so this is straight as shot out of camera, no adjustments. Back to the photos here. So here's the Canon, here's the Sigma. I didn't get the framing quite exactly the same, but it's close enough for our purposes here. So immediately looking at an overall, I noticed the Canon is brighter. Now, before you ask, these were the exact same settings. I have an 800th of a second, F2.8, 24 millimeters, and all shot at 100 ISO. So yeah, immediately the Canon does look a little bit brighter. Now let's zoom in to 100% and then pull this building straight into frame. So as I'm looking here, going back and forth, and keep in mind, we are at 100%. It's very subtle differences. Now if you look, there's a couple people up here on the patio. They look a little fuzzier in the Sigma lens. So maybe it's not as sharp. Same thing with the light here. So let's go ahead and zoom in to say 300%. And I'm going to zoom in on this light so we can get a really good look at it. Keep in mind, this is quite dark at the moment. And this was a tripod shot. So very steady, 800th of a second. So there's no camera shake in this. And I feel like the Canon lens is definitely holding detail a little bit better in the shadows. And that may just appear that way because it's a little bit brighter, but it is definitely a sharper lens. And this is getting actually pretty close to the edge. So this is the Sigma lens up towards the top corner. We're seeing a little bit of blurring over here. The Canon lens definitely still sharp. Keep in mind, this is at 2.8. Also looking at the corner of the building here, we're seeing a little bit of uh, fringing, some green fringing, chromatic aberration going on over there. Seeing it still with the Canon lens, but not, maybe not quite as noticeable because it is a little bit sharper. So I'm seeing it less up here. I still see it up here a little bit, but it's more prominent in the Sigma lens. Now let's take a look at the fence over here. Very, very blown out. And this is the Canon lens. Keep in mind, we're still at 300%. Not seeing a whole lot of difference here, other than the Sigma lens is just a little bit darker. So if we go straight in the middle of the frame, looking at this light right here, here's the Canon lens, Sigma lens. Scroll down a little bit to get this fence here. Canon lens, Sigma lens. The Sigma lens is looking a little bit sharper, dead center. But as we get towards the edges, obviously that's going to be out of focus because it's really close. Our only real good judge over here is this corner. So as an overall looking at this first comparison shot, the Sigma is a little bit darker. It's got a little bit more blurring around the edges of the frame. It does have a little bit more chromatic aberration going on and is a tiny bit softer after we get away from the middle than the Canon. So still a fan of the Canon. I don't know. I'm not trying to be biased against the Canon here. I am a fan of that lens. I'm a fan of the Sigma 50 millimeter 1.4, 1.2, I think it's a 1.4. I'm a huge fan of that lens. So not trying to throw any bias in this, but let's take a look at the second shot. Now this one's shot at 70 millimeters. It's a tripod shot. It's at 1 sixth of a second at F. 22. So we're on a tripod. We're pretty stable. It's a slow shutter speed. We shouldn't really see much shake going on here. So here, let's just take a look at the overall here real quick. So here's the Canon and here is the Sigma. Again, a tiny bit darker on the Sigma. Maybe like a third of a stop, maybe half a stop darker. Not a huge deal. Most cameras 
should be able to compensate for that if you're shooting raw. So let's go ahead and zoom in to 300% here, go back up to this corner and see if we notice any fringing. Now on the Sigma lens, I'm starting to see a little red fringing around the building. Not too noticeable, maybe a little bit more noticeable back here on the really dark parts of the building. Now, if we go back over to the Canon, again, we do have a little bit of red fringing over here. Very, very subtle difference here. Canon, Sigma. Canon, Sigma. The Canon does still seem just ever so slightly sharper. So here looking at this light again, this is the Sigma, this is the Canon. Definitely a little bit sharper here. As we move into the corners, let's go down here and take a look. Here's the Sigma, here's the Canon. Very, very subtle difference. Keep in mind this was at f22 and 70 millimeters. Looking at this corner over here. Sigma's still a little bit softer in the corner. So let's go mid frame. That's about the middle of the frame right there. Let's go down so we can see this window kicked out. Here's the Canon. Here's the Sigma. Canon. Sigma. So, so subtle. So all the way closed down at F22 at 70 millimeters with both of these lenses. They're different, but they're very, very subtle differences. I definitely still lean towards the Canon on this one just because, okay, I'm being a little bias on this one. That's just, if I had to pick right here, I'd say Canon because it's the Canon and I like the Canon. We're not done yet. We still haven't looked at the image stabilized photos. So let's dive right in and take a look at those. So this was getting close to sunset. So this was actually pretty dark in this little entryway here. These were all shot at 100 ISO, one quarter of a second, F10, 41 millimeters. So we're right in the middle there from 24 to 70. Yeah, 41, somewhere in the middle. So as an overall, you can tell in these trees back here, this is maybe a little shaky. This is the Canon. And again, a quarter of a second here, and you can see how much motion is there by the person walking by with the dog. Quarter of a second, you can definitely tell the tree in the middle is sharper. So let's go back and look at the Canon, and we're gonna zoom in to, let's zoom in to 200%, because that gives us a pretty good view center frame. You can definitely tell that is not sharp. It's not bad, but it's not sharp. So with the image stabilize optical, catch myself, optical stabilizer on in the Sigma lens, boom, look at that. Still maybe a little hint of shake in there. And it was windy, so the trees are blowing in the wind, so don't, don't totally judge by the trees, but you can definitely tell that tree is sharper. And the brick in the background is definitely sharper. So the optical stabilizer is working in the Sigma lens quite nicely. Now, if we're going back and forth looking at color, I found that these two were really, really similar. I didn't catch somebody walking in both shots, but you can definitely tell dogs moving, the paws are moving, the feet are moving, but, but everything else around it is pretty sharp. Now, if we go back to the Canon lens, a little handheld shake in there. I didn't quite notice so much the brightness and darkness with this shot. Definitely sharper. So if you're doing low light street photography and you want to know which lens to buy, this is a pretty simple, simple decision right now. Buy the Sigma because it has that image stabilizer. And quarter of a second, literally a quarter of a second. And it's still that sharp. Handheld. Handheld. Did I mention that was handheld? No tripod. So after looking at all three of these shots, which one would I buy? I'm not done yet. I'm not done testing this out yet, but at this point, which one would I buy? Which one would you buy? Put that down in the comments. Let me know. Let me know where you're at right now. But you know what? We're not, we're not done yet. Don't make your total decision just yet because if you shoot video, 
You also want to know, is this optical stabilizer going to be good for video work, shooting handheld video? This is what really drew me in to test out this lens. So how I had this set up, I had the camera on a tripod. I had the legs spread out for stabilization. I had the head up a little bit, and then I was riding the one wheel down the middle of the street, trying to keep this as stable as possible. So taking a look at the first round of testing with this, you can definitely tell both lenses are shaky. Maybe the Sigma is like 5% uh, less shaky. I don't know, not really, I, I don't know. It's not making that much of a difference. I really did not notice much difference. So DIS, if you notice that in there, it's Digital Image Stabilizer, and that's in the Canon EOS R. So I made sure that was off for my initial test. So after taking a look at these kind of side by side, I'm thinking, okay, they're both really shaky. I'm not really noticing much of a difference. So let's turn the digital image stabilizer on, just run one more test with the Canon lens and see if there's much of a difference there. If it's too shaky, if it's too wobbly, if you're getting that weird warp effect with the digital image stabilizer on, definitely makes a big difference, helps out a lot. So I wanted to do a second round of tests with the digital image stabilizer on in the body for both of these lenses. Did a second run. Let's take a look and see what happens then. There are some spots in here where you can kind of see maybe the image stabilizer, optical stabilizer in the Sigma is working against the digital image stabilizer and you get some really like quick jerky movement. Not really feasible, but then I did take both of these shots threw a warp stabilizer on them, didn't do anything special, just threw it on there, applied it, wanted to see what would happen. Let's take a look. Definitely smooths out the motion on here. If you didn't know, you'd say that's a pretty smooth shot. It's got a little tilt left, a little tilt right. Now on the Sigma, again, it kind of like drifts a little bit. I think you can make that work. If you really wanted to put the time into it, if I was really going for the shot for a production, I probably would have done it like five or six times to make sure I had a really solid shot. In fact, I probably just would have put it on a gimbal with the image stabilizers and it would have been like buttery smooth right down the middle, but I didn't. This was just handheld on a tripod, on a one wheel, riding down the street. Anyway, where are you guys at with this lens? If you're doing just photo, where are you at? If you're doing just video, where are you at? Put that down in the comments. Let me know, I'm curious. Personally, I'm going to stick with my Canon 24 to 70 because I already own it. It is a more expensive lens, minus the optical stabilizer, the better lens. If you take the optical stabilizer out of the question, the Canon is the better lens. Sigma, I don't know, that's a tough choice. So if you're just doing photo and you're doing low light, street photography, things with like really slow shutter speeds handheld, you might wanna get that Sigma lens. And if you're not, maybe you get the Canon lens. Sigma's way cheaper though. It's like five or $600 cheaper. Right now the Canon is 1600 on B&H and the Sigma is just under 1100 on B&H. So big price difference there. Actually like a fairly sizable price difference there. If you're thinking about either two of these lenses, let me know what you're thinking. Let me know which way you're leaning. Put that down in the description. I'm curious. Let me know why. Why are you leaning towards one lens over the other? I had one question with this. Is it good for video? Is the optical stabilizer good for video? I didn't find that it helped that much. And that, that could be a deciding factor for you. So I found that the digital image stabilizer in the Canon EOS R works a lot better than the optical stabilized Sigma lens. I was just curious. That's what I wanted to know. All right, guys. Well, do me a huge favor. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button down there. If you don't like it and you're still watching it, why? Hit that thumbs down. If you're still watching this and you don't like it. And put that down in the, why are you still watching this? Put that down in the comments. If you're still watching this and you don't like it. Why? Go, go watch somebody else's video. I don't care. All right, guys. Well, I tell you what. Hit that thumbs up button if you like this. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. And I'll see you guys next time.
take 18,942,000,000.